my name is Anna Dobrovolska. I'm from International Youth Human Rights Movement. It is a human rights community for young people uh, from Eastern Europe, basically. So I uh, live in Russia and work in a city called Voronezh, and I mainly work in sphere of human rights education and fundamental human rights. So the Youth Human Rights Movement, the international network, was uh, created in 1998 as a space for young people to uh, join the professional, the existing human rights movement. And uh, the, its main aim is to create and embrace the new generation of human rights defenders. And the Human Rights House uh, in Voronezh, it is the local uh, hub for different human rights organizations who work both on local, national and international level. Uh, I would say that this is a very complicated question because uh, um, we, we can see that uh, since, I don't know, 2006, the general human rights situation in Russia and neighboring countries was really deteriorating and uh, more and more very bad um, legislative initiatives uh, coming now into power. And at the moment we see that uh, unfortunately our state becomes more and more like the authoritarian state and less and less spaces left for the civil society or for fundamental freedoms and less possibilities for people to show their disagreement and to express their protest and express their thoughts in general. Yeah, but this is a very general overview, of course, and in, in details, uh, I would say that we have um, legal uh, limitations of almost every fundamental human rights. It is almost impossible to, to organize a peaceful protest. It is very difficult to arrange the non-governmental organization or any kind of association. And uh, it is becoming uh, more and more difficult to work as human rights defenders, um, especially due to recent legal developments in the country. Yes, uh, it is the very notorious law on so-called on foreign agents, which has uh, become already the first association for when we talk to people in Russia or Russian-speaking communities that we are human rights organizations. The first association is, ah, you are those who work for foreign money, so you are foreign agents. About 60 organizations are now in the list. Um, I would say that almost... 10 of them are either liquidated or in process of liquidation, which means that they no longer will be working here. For uh, uh, some of them uh, agreed to this label and continued their work, very few, but it means being a foreign agent and officially registered uh, according to this law means that you not only put this label on all your publications, on all your campaigning materials, and you have to state it every time you deliver some public speech, but also it means that you have to report to the state institutions much more often than in case if you were like ordinary NGO. Uh, and uh, as I said, all the re uh, and other organizations they uh, uh, they face the quite big financial burden, the fines, uh, which um, are now up to tens thousand euro for every organization. So they have to pay this fine for not being registered on time. They are considered so called so, so called foreign agents if they receive any kind of foreign donations. But uh, as far as I said, uh, the, the whole sphere was organized in such a way that it was very difficult to work only for Russian, uh, for grants which come from foundations within Russia, both private or state. Uh, and so really many organizations had to receive any kind of foreign donations. And according to this, uh, according to this new law, which is not new, yeah, which was in 2012, they all are considered as foreign agents. Just so if you, they, the, the law itself has a combination of two factors, uh, receiving foreign donations and performing so-called political activity. But the definition of political activity is so broad, so basically any kind of uh, public actions, awareness raising campaign, educational activities can be considered as political activism. Uh, and yeah, as, as all of us were receiving foreign donations, it makes it very easy to uh, list any kind of NGO or any kind of group or organization listed as foreign agents. Uh, basically, one of the... Basically, one of the uh, leading spheres which we do within our organization is the human rights education program. So we uh, remain one of the few organizations in Russia that provide basic human rights training for young people and basically for everybody who wants to, to know more about human rights. So we invite people to our seminars, lectures, trainings and so on, and they 
uh, if they got, get interested to know more about human rights, we then give them advice and consultancy and any kind of support for them to join the um, existing human rights organization or start their own initiative. And um, at the same time, um, notwithstanding the, all the bad uh, influence of the foreign agent law, I, I can say that um, the whole situation in the country now shows that there is a growing interest among young people, especially to know more about human rights. And there are more and more people who come to us saying that I would like to work in human rights organization. But unfortunately, um, there are no jobs <laughs> for them. And uh, as there are only few NGOs that continue their work and we all have shrinking of the resources. Uh, so. Yeah, and also for for the graduates of our seminars and for those people with whom we work, we invite them to, to join um, different initiatives uh, in the field of human rights. We invite them to perform actions uh, of public oversight, to control the police and other state bodies, and also to perform some awareness raising campaign, to work uh, as a promoters of uh, tolerance and non-discrimination values and so on. So we accept the human rights education, we do a large uh, variety of activities aimed at um, protection of human rights itself. I actually see the growing human rights agenda as a very natural trend. It is very uh, sad and very uh, not not very clear for me why people uh, why people are still so connected to the conservative values and why still they think that you know national borders or patriotism are more important than something universal which unites us as a mankind. So, for me personally, joining the human rights organization was important because I saw this. Uh, the universal ground, which is for for all of us as people, but not for not for us as Russian citizens or Ukrainian citizens or somebody else. So I would say that for me the most important is to act uh, to promote the values in which I believe, and uh, also to help sometimes to help the concrete people who face uh, persecution or injustice or whatever else. Unfortunately, in my work, I mainly. Um, involved not in the help of concrete to some concrete people but in yeah, broader dialogue and advocacy and promotion of human rights but still i consider it very important uh, i would say it is not that bad in a way that people are afraid to support us but it is bad in a way that people do not believe in what we are doing they do not believe that human rights are important and that human rights are actually possible that's the more uh, worrying trend for me. So if you if you believe in something but afraid to support, there is something that can be done. But if you're not afraid to support but you just think that this is a bullshit, then it is much more complicated. And uh, that's why we pay so much attention to the awareness raising and actually talking to people about human rights to present it in a way so that they can believe in it, basically, and think that it is something that is possible uh, in principle, and it's something that worth to fight for it and worth to get it achieved, and it is something achievable at the same time. Because uh, I would say that um, for me, the one of the most worrying um, trends in Russia that people are uh, really get used to violence, structural violence around them, and that, that they do not believe that other, so to say, other world is possible. In a slogan of 1968. And what, what we try to do and what I try to do is to show that another world is really possible and that we can fight for it and we deserve it, basically. <laughs> uh, what I would uh, recommend to be positive, positive development, so what? <laughs> because it is really hard to say about any, any kind of positive news at the moment. Well, I, I can say some kind of general recommendations, but I would see uh, good points to continue, for example. And I don't know. Uh, to my mind, it is very important to express solidarity, the international solidarity campaigns and actions for uh, with the Russian civil society, with the civil society and human rights defenders in Ukraine and in countries like Azerbaijan, Turkmenistan, or Uzbekistan, where people face even more, much more oppression than we face here in Russia. At the same time, I would say that it would be really important to uh, people from Western Europe and from, for example, United States or some kind of Western democracies to pay attention to not only what our governments do with us, but also to what their governments do on international or local level, and sometimes how uh, their governments also do not fulfill their human rights obligations uh, they are obliged to do. So uh, I would say that we not only should uh, concentrate ourselves on one country, but uh, are rather to 
pay more attention to the existing uh, international mechanisms on human rights protection and uh, make them these mechanisms work actually because now we can see that on UN on European Union on Council of Europe level basically every almost every inst institution or instrument is dying and it is very it, it becomes more and more difficult for us to use them that's why we also need some help to make them stronger which means that we have to believe that they deserve it uh, as well.